Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome back to a slightly different Gran Turismo Sport video. In this one, you can see the grid there. This is an FIA race and a manufacturer's race, that is. And there's two YouTubers in here with me, so three of us in total. Uh, Kai25, or Key25, I always say his name wrong, and Tichini Racing. You may well have heard of them. If not, then they are linked in the description. Both of them British, both of them very fast in this game, like way faster than I am. Uh, will users, both really good guys and make, make lots of Grand Turismo Sport content. So if you don't know about them, have a look, as they're definitely worth checking out. Now this race, 12 laps around Brands Hatch in Group 4 cars, I thought I'm going to bring you the perspective of all three of us, just to see how the three of us tackle this race. Now myself and Key, we're in the same car, we're both driving the Cayman, uh, we both signed for Porsche, and digitally signed with Audi so he's driving the TT. Now there's scope in this race for different strategies. Uh, a 12 lap race, the tyre wear was rather severe uh, so you can hold out for a one stop, you can also go for the two stop. There's different, different strategies on offer which makes this race extra uh, exciting. Now this is the qualifying lap I did, my best one. You can see on the right hand side all of my laps are red, mainly meaning I messed most of them up and we're going to go through here towards the end of the lap into Sterling's a little bit too late on the brakes, go a little bit wide, you see there uh, that's lost a couple of attempts immediately I'm sitting in 18th at this point here, I haven't actually set a lap so this one needs to be good as I've run out of time, this is the final lap we're going to come up to the finish line to set our time 28.4 is for pole, 29.7 is what I set 1.3 seconds away, although people were still to set their times. Ultimately it was 10th and I think if I had done a perfect lap I might have shaved off half a second but even then I would still only be 9th or 8th at best. Uh, the difference wasn't too big there. Uh, really it wouldn't have made too much of a difference. Here is the front of the grid. So Matty278 on pole in the BMW. Now here's the first of the YouTubers I'm going to feature. Key25 starting second in the same car as me in uh, the Porsche. Kalster25 you may well have heard of him. The ultimate stream sniper, very fast driver. And we've got Tijni, there he is in fourth in the Audi TT. Now, a little bit further back, there is me, 10th Super GT. Okay, this is it, the beginning of the race. So I'm going to cut in between all three of us just to show you the difference. So Kai there at Aki at the front of three, and followed by Tijni in fourth, and then I'm back here in 10th. The race begins, we are underway following Kingpin in ninth there into the first turn and of course with the rolling starts a fairly clean start here don't have to worry about that key already up into the hairpin at the top of the hill it just shows you how much of a gap you get already just by qualifying well in any race so key already on the attack against Matty trying to look for that lead early on additionally just falling away slightly in the back of that front three Kingpin making a mistake and I'm not going to go for the move here to kind of back off a little bit then resettle into the position and try and follow them through turn four onto the back straight. Don't really get a, a good run there. As we come down, then the back straight uh, key already on the back of Matty. It kind of looked like that from the pretty much the first or second corner. That he's already going for the attack. Looking up the inside, I think there was a tiny bit of contact which would have transferred speed over to Matty. He's looking up the inside, then dangerous place to go for a move didn't quite have an overlap, I think it's better of it, it's a long race, Tijani already be, uh, beginning to fall back off of the pace of the top three, perhaps made a mistake during this lap, can't quite live with that pace at the moment, a little bit further back here, and uh, still settling into 10th, uh, not really much in the way of overtaking back there, Aki now still on the back, you can see here Tijani just dropping back maybe by about a second, Key going, uh, going defensive against Kalster into turn one. And on the braking zone, doesn't really leave him too much space. Kalster force wide and does well to actually recover that and not spin out completely on the on the, uh, on the gravel. Up the inside goes Tisney, looking for the pass into third position. Kalster just going to recover, keep a nose alongside and get alongside completely into turn number three. Gets the job done, runs Tisney a little bit wide still fight here but he's on the outside into turn four it's not quite going to happen for him well you can see that the grip of the Audi is fairly 
fairly good on the way in. But, uh, the Huracan there just settling back into third. This is just opened up the gap here as I'm still looking at the back of Kingpin. Uh, just falling away slightly. The race is fairly close though as uh, the, the pack hasn't really uh, been fighting too much. So not much field spread at the moment. I'm seven seconds off of the leading battle. And just shows you qualifying is really important. You lose so much time just by being further back. With these rolling starts, with the cars all spread out, as soon as you know, as soon as the race starts, you're already like five seconds behind the leader. That is a massive disadvantage to try to overcome. It's almost impossible in most occasions. So again, end of lap two, key right on the back of Matty. Still trying to probe and pick away past. He can't quite do it at this moment. Although this Cayman does look very, very, very sharp indeed through the corners. He's going to be looking for that, for that pass. He does set a purple lap here, although he is only the second person to cross the line on lap two which is you know, he's probably going to be setting a fast lap up the inside into the hairpin gets the job done it's a solid move just held it steady on the apex Matty couldn't really fight back on the way out and you see just the gap here how much uh, the gap has developed already as we as we start lap three a uh, couple of seconds there deficit now to the top two so it's become a two by two battle uh, in the top four big gap between second and third. A little bit further back now, I'm struggling for grip, uh, under attack from the Renner McGann Trophy from behind. So drag race down the back straight, trying to fight for position. I'm still on the inside though. I should be able to keep this one. I'll just settle back to the left hand side with the superior power. The Renner McGann, not really the best car in a straight line. Although it will, it will do really well around this GP loop here. Very good around the Fast sweeping corners is the uh, Renault Megane Trophy. Definitely have to watch out for that. You know, a lot of these corners, very much single file kind of corners. You don't really want to be going side by side for a lot of these turns, unless you've already got an overlap going into the braking zone. For now, though, settling still into tenth. Not much in the way of attacking progress from myself. Kind of just really trying to hold on here, and still trying to work out exactly what is the best strategy as the driver ahead dr uh, drives wide on to. The gravel, I think he might have been shown there by another driver. As uh, now Tichini still on the back of Calster, all over him, into the hairpin, into the Druids. He gets the move done. And this time, can he run him out? Yes, he can. He can get ahead before the, the exit of the turn. And Calster can't quite fight that one back into uh, Graham Hill Bend at the bottom of the hill. And again, look at the gap ahead. That is, that is opening up massively. Couple of seconds now, at least. Tichini taking a defensive line, uh, so you can't quite see it. But uh, Calster would have been trying to fight back there, uh, hence the, the narrow line into turn four. So scanning ahead onto Kai, you see the gap there as he goes up the hill into Hawthorne Bend. Now um, he's under attack from Sky Pikmin uh, into Hawthorne. A couple of seconds after Key reached this corner, it's a good maybe five, six second gap now, which has opened up quite quickly through down the hill up the dip again uh, you're going to be under pressure you can see the battle uh, just up ahead there at the top of the screen uh, uh, Tichini really under pressure now from, from Calster and from the Oscaro driver so Tichini might be suffering from a uh, tyre you see the tyre wear here look at the bottom left of the screen the, the left hand side of Key the tyres uh, are just shot to pieces he's coming to the pit lane at the end of lap 4 he's going to go for a two stop strategy and uh, Tishni's going to carry on here, presumably for the one stop. And then I'm going to follow Key. I'm going to go with the same, the same strategy as him. He was uh, leading the race. He's in the same car. I think it was fairly logical to try to, to uh, mimic his strategy. He rejoins here, just in seventh, up the inside of Kingpin, who's the driver I was following. So that's how far ahead Key was. He was more than a pit stop ahead of me. Unless I had stayed out, he would have still rejoined ahead of me. That's how far ahead he was. And this is the battle for the lead pretty much. There's a bit of contact I sense there as he runs a little bit wide up the inside on the, on the way out. Uh, this is me now, a little bit further back. By a little bit, I mean a lot. That, uh, that, uh, down into 15 at that point there. Um, the strategy will come into favour, into my favour, and in Key's favour, I suppose, in these two laps here. So all of these drivers who didn't pit, they're all going to be on very old tyres. Uh, at the same time, he's going to be on, and myself, we're going to be on very, very brand new tyres. Very brand new, that doesn't really 
any sense, but um, the grip is there. The grip is there, and you've got to make the most of it. So you've got to be quite aggressive with your, with your driving. And I think he is really, really aggressive on this lap so far, really fighting his way through the pack very quickly. Back into fourth. And uh, Tichini in the lead here, still uh, controlling the race from the front, but he is under pressure from an increasingly uh, bigger group as Key is now part of that. Into the final turn, it's all getting a bit wishy washy. Kalster uh, peels to the right hand side on lap five, an unusual lap to go into the pits as uh, it's kind of halfway between a one and a two stop strategy. We'll see exactly what he does later on. Into turn one, um, on the limits of space. Uh, against Crazy John, but he's got the job done into second, up behind Tichini now, so the pressure is on. You see the massive difference in grip between the two cars. Tichini, his front left is basically 80% worn out, so he's going to have basically no grip into the left-handers, as it's kind of proven there, or well, he was trying to give him space, I'm not sure. But key up the inside, and I don't think Tichini's going to be able to fight this one, not with the much inferior grip for a left-hander, especially with those front tyres, look at those front tyres on, on that uh, graphic at the bottom left of the screen, he basically has no grip. This is my perspective now, lap 6, this is where some of the drivers are going to be coming in for their stops if they're going to be doing the one stop strategy at the end of this lap, so I'm going to try to tuck into the slipstream of the Ascaro driver down the hill, I'm going to go past the Mustang driver, is he going to go for the move? No he isn't. Back to 13, but I'm going to have to be really aggressive here, there's a, there's a very big pack ahead and I'm presuming that a lot of them are going to go into the pits at the end of this lap. So we're better to jump a lot of them. So there's still potential in this race for me yet, even though I am outside of the top 10. So Tichini now having to go defensive against Matty into the final turn. Is he going to peel to the right hand side? Takes a nice narrow line and peels right to take his pit stop, his one and only stop of the race. It all gets a bit messy here. As the Mustang driver was on the left hand side of someone who wasn't going to the pit lane, so it all got a bit messy there. Someone was <laughs> swerving across, I didn't know exactly what happened there, it was all a bit messy. And here's Tizzy just rejoining the circuit from his pit stop, and I'm just going to sweep around the outside to just get past him. And we're on differing strategies here. So this is where, again, the race is going to flip into his favour, because I'm now on the older tyres, my laps, uh, my, my tyres are two laps old now, he's, you know, are no laps old. He's just come out of the pits. Uh, so he's going to have the fresher tyres, he's going to have the grip. So I'm going to have to manage that as we go around uh, lap number seven here. So we are beyond the halfway mark. So it's an interesting race. It's quite hard to tell exactly how this one's going to go because we're on differing strategies. Obviously, you know, I'm a long way off the lead, which is here, Kai or Key, a couple of corners ahead, maybe at least 10 seconds or so ahead. You can see on the map just how spread it has become at the front of the race, first, second, and third a good couple of seconds between all of them. But it's from here, from about fourth backwards, it's actually fairly uh, regular intervals, really short interval, intervals between each of, the, each of the players here. So the gaps are actually fairly close, which makes it fairly difficult when I go in for my pit stop at the end of lap eight. I am presumably going to lose out to a fair amount of those drivers, so I really do have to have a good couple of laps here. Come in at the end of lap eight for my second stop and then go attacking in the last couple of laps. So I actually drive really wide there, kind of maybe worried a little bit too much about Tishini where he, where he is, and he's actually going to fly through past easily into fifth. And basically here, my main priority is just try and stick in the slipstream. I'm not going to tr really try to overtake him back. It's not really worth doing. We're only, I'm only going to cost myself time. So I wouldn't consider him to be my main opponent for an overall race result. He's way ahead of me, really, even though he's only just there. I still have a pit stop to do, whereas he hasn't. You can see the, the horde queuing up behind as um, Kai... I keep saying Kai, I'm just going to call him Kai because I, I like saying that. He's, he's miles ahead at this point here. He's uh, got a comfortable five seconds or so. So I think when he comes in for his stop at the end of this lap, his second stop, he might even be able to rejoin ahead of this big battle for third, or at least where I am in fifth or sixth, sorry, he might actually be able to rejoin well ahead. In fact, he should do, because he would have been ahead of me at the end of the first stop, and presumably he would have gained even more. So he should be well ahead of where I am. So he's going to he's gonna come in at the end of the stop, just one more corner to do. He's, uh, he's looking really good here, actually. It was hard to tell exactly what was the best strategy. I, I copied Key, because um, 
same car and he was in the lead I was thinking that it must be the best thing to do so I, I, I did I matched him and uh, I'm not really quite matching him in terms of actual driving performance Cal's still into the pits at the end of lap 8 so he's only doing a 3 lap stint there he's gone for the 2 stop strategy on the exit he rejoins in the lead that's how dominant he was in this race uh, we're having a really good run on the fresher tyres so now he's going to the end with brand new tyres 4 laps to do he should be able to see this one out from that position that he's in. On the way out, for me, I'll get a five second penalty. I had a really awful rejoin. Oh, sorry, a really awful uh, entry into the pit lane. I bumped the wall. You get a penalty for that. It was a bit awkward. I'm going to kind of forget about that. Just try and really focus on my race. Still try and get track position and see where I might have finished without that penalty, even though it will lose me a couple of positions here. So, rejoining at 14. I've got the fresher tyres compared to all of these guys. All these guys. Well, most of these guys came in at the end of lap 6 so all of their tyres are going to be 2 laps further walled compared to me I do have that slight advantage from here to the end look at the map, there is a group maybe a couple of seconds ahead you can see them just going through Hawthorne's Bend at the top of the hill if we can slowly build them in over the course of these next couple of laps then there is a chance I could be on the attack going into the last couple of laps and perhaps get back into that top 10 if all things go well that is uh, currently though stuck behind this Mustang who's uh, got a stubborn resistance to keep his 13th place as we come then through uh, Sheen's curve he almost runs two wheels onto the grass and gets sucked off doesn't quite manage it though I'm uh, right on the back of him that Mustang looking quite cumbersome through the turns this is Tizzy now he's down to third or he's still in third he's caught significantly onto the back of uh, the Ascaro driver with Matty now at the inside taking his third away from him and this is me into turn one, can I repeat what Tisley, or sorry, what uh, Matty's just done with Tisley there? Looking up the inside, the Mustang does give the big space on the inside and kind of invade the space, remove a tenth of my penalty, ghost out momentarily, but I take the position up the inside into 12th position now. So Matty up the inside of Sky Pikmin, I think it's clear here that um, Matty has the speed compared to these two drivers, uh, so I think, uh, the, um, I think Matty going for a different strategy as well and he's uh, looking, to go, looking to go defensive a uh, key with a purple sector there he's setting the pace at this moment i think he's going to run away quite easily with this victory he's got a massive gap at the moment and barring any mistakes he should be winning this one as a uh, tishney here with a good battle uh, matty looks like he's got the pace he's just he's gone past both these drivers on this lap and he's going to begin to pull away it might well be a battle for third that might be the best result here that Tishini can achieve. It looks like uh, the grip on his car is fairly bad on the front end. There's actually uh, the Ascara drive drives really wide on the exit of Sterling's and hands Tishini third place on a plate as easy as you like. And I'm going to make a massive mistake here. I'm going to kind of almost copy um, what Sky Pikmin just did. And well, I, I did it even worse. So I'm going to run really wide and lose plenty of time and a position. Back on board with Tishini. Already Matty beginning to pull away quite comprehensively and that kind of confirms here the fate of this race will only be a third at best for Tisney here unless of course there are some mistakes up ahead. That doesn't look likely at this point here. There's going to be a fight to keep his position. Kingpin in fifth doing well. I was actually, I qualified behind Kingpin and it shows you just how differing our races have been. I'm back here in 13th quite a long way off. And there, and Kingpin's up there in fifth, hunting down Tijni. It really could not have gone really any differently. Calster down in sixth. After starting in third, he split the other two YouTubers of this race at the beginning in qualifying. But um, with the un unorthodox strategy, maybe we could say, pitting in a lap five and eight was a bit unusual. But it hasn't quite worked out for him, maybe as well as he would have liked. He just running away with this. You can see the grip on these tyres. This is the thing that I would say he's managed so much better than I have is, is um, driving on warm tyres. I think the ultimate lap pace isn't, obviously he's faster, but isn't massively different. The thing that he's much better than me on, much, much better than me on, is driving on the warm tyres, managing the tyres and then driving on them as they are worn out. That's something I need to manage a lot more. And I think it is hard to do on a controller. Uh, so 
I really do just need to make that transition to the wheel if I want to take this really seriously and get some actual good speed uh, at maybe the expense of some enjoyment, you could say. But into the final lap, see just the grip as um, I kind of just throw into turn one. Really, really poor driving on on the, on balance, really. As um, kind of struggling out and that kind of proves my point just not really managing the grip as well as key here as he's just he's not really making any mistakes you know watching this replay he is wide there but I mean that's about that's about as bad as a mistake gets from key in this race driving a little driving a little bit wide but he can afford to make that mistake he's so far ahead that it doesn't really matter it's the final lap he's like five seconds ahead he can afford just to hold off a little bit doesn't need to push the track limits too much you can see just how much space is given to the left hand side very easy to dip your wheels wide, get, get spun out. Uh, Tishney's still pushing, he's under pressure here, so he does need to maximise some of these track limits. Uh, he can still push as much as possible because he is under attack. He's going to come round here, he's going to easily win the race in a, in a great performance, very aggressive on some of the laps, but uh, does easily come through to win by about 7 seconds ultimately. So a good performance from him. This is back with me though. I do have a shot at some positions here. I'm in 13th. Going to look to the left-hand side. Crazy John, who was up at the t uh, up at the sharp end earlier on, is uh, suffering a little bit more now. TC comes through to finish in third, and I'm around the outside. Shocko making a mistake. Someone else, PRT Snake, is spinning around on the main straight. I've still got this five-second penalty to get rid of. And I do it a little bit too late, and I cross the line in 10th, but with the penalty, go down to back to 13th. So I might have gained a position there. Maybe if I had served that penalty dead correct, I might have got a position or two. But ultimately, it didn't really matter. It, was, it wasn't a good result. I would have only got 10th at absolute best. And there are the final results. Key winning by 7 seconds with Tijney. 14 seconds further back. I think the TT, not quite as good around this circuit. But he still did a really good performance. He gained a position for where he started and finished in 3rd. Very clinical performance from the pair of them and uh, not quite for me but uh, it was a good interesting race and i do hope you enjoyed it of course do check out both of their channels for more grand Turismo sport content i hope you enjoyed the video as always guys let me know your thoughts i shall see you in the next one goodbye Listen.